Hi everyone. Today we're starting work on a new module called Motors and Generators. The first thing we'll be looking at is the motor effect, which is a curious little force that acts on uh, current carrying conductors when they're near magnets. Uh, and of course this was the principle upon which we can construct an electric motor. To begin with though, we need to learn a bit about magnets so that we can describe the magnetic fields that are used to create motors. So our first section will be about magnetic fields. Here we'll be learning about what magnetic fields are and how to draw them and why they're important. Now you've probably learned a bit about magnets before in either junior high school or maybe even primary school. So you'll know that magnets will attract or repel each other, right? If you bring the north pole of a magnet near the south pole of a magnet, then the two magnets will attract each other. But if you bring the same pole together, north and north, or south and south, the magnets will repel each other, right? This means that in the area around the magnet, uh, a magnet is able to attract or repel other magnets. So in physics, we can say that the magnets are surrounded by magnetic fields. And we say that this magnetic field, this area around the magnet, is what causes the other magnet to experience a force. Right? That's how fields work. We use the same thing when we were discussing gravitational fields. We said that the area around an object that's affected by the gravity of that object is in the gravitational field of that object. Right? So, in diagrams, instead of using something like gravitational field lines, we can represent magnetic fields by magnetic field lines. With me so far? So how do we draw these magnetic field lines? Well, we can see a few in the diagram over here, but we're going to need to lay down some conventions. We say that magnetic field lines point in the same direction that a compass would point. Now remember, the, uh, the north pole of a compass needle uh, is magnetized north, so it will be attracted to south poles of magnets, right? So if you bring a compass very close to the south pole of a magnet, the compass will point toward the south pole. And if you bring it close to the north pole of a magnet, it will point away from the north pole. So when we draw magnetic field lines, the magnetic field lines go from the north pole of the magnet to the south pole of the magnet. This is the convention that we use for drawing magnetic field lines. So we can see that the field lines are always closed. They never go off into the distance or just appear on their own. They always go from the North Pole to the South Pole. So if we have a stronger magnetic field, the field lines will be closer together. If we have a weaker magnetic field, uh, then they'll be further apart. We can measure the strength of the magnetic field in Tesla. So we can see that very, very close to the magnet, the field lines are quite close together. But as we move further away, the field lines get further apart. That means that uh, very close to the magnet will have a strong magnetic field, and further away from the magnet will have a weak magnetic field. Now a Tesla is actually a very, very large unit. A magnetic field of a single Tesla in strength is a very, very strong magnetic field indeed. Most of the magnetic fields you'll be working with will be measured perhaps in millitesla, which are thousandths of a Tesla. Now, one very important thing about magnetic field lines is that they do not cross. They never cross no matter uh, how close together you bring two magnets or whether you look inside the magnet. When two magnets get close together, then the magnetic fields will change shape so that the magnetic field lines cannot cross. So the resulting field lines, the sort of field lines that have been bent out of shape, show the combined effects of the magnets. So we can see that when we pull these uh, magnets close together, the field lines start to distort. And we can see now that instead of being sort of oval shaped magnetic field lines, uh, we have field lines that uh, move away from the magnets almost perpendicular when we're close to the magnet. So this new shape of the magnetic field reflects how objects are attracted to the magnets now that they're very close together. Make sense? Now the thing about magnetic fields 
lines never crossing is that this is a little bit different to various other fields in physics. So if we look at gravitational fields, gravitational field lines will cross when they reach a mass that's emitting the gravitational field. If we look at electric field lines, you haven't quite learned about electric fields yet, but you'll get there. Electric field lines can also cross together uh, at the particle that they're coming from, whereas magnetic field lines can never cross. Now, if we're going to draw magnetic field lines that are not going across or up or down, then they're going to be coming in or out of an image. So we need to remember how we draw vectors in order to see how we're going to draw magnetic fields. If we have field lines pointing towards you, then they appear as dots, right? So if we get a big area with lots and lots of dots, it means that there are many magnetic field lines pointing straight towards you, just like vectors. If a vector points straight towards you, it's represented by a dot. So what's it represented by if it's pointing away from you? Well, that of course is a cross. So if you see a big square filled with little crosses, it's filled with vectors pointing this way. This will become very important later on because in the motor effect, we often use three different vectors that are all at right angles to one another. So we'll have one vector going left to right, one vector going up to down, and a third vector going towards and away from you. This is why it's important to remember how these work. Now, if you ever run a very big current through uh, a wire or any conductor, then you'll notice something interesting if you hold a compass near it. The conductor will produce a circular magnetic field. That is, if you put a compass near it, it'll point in the direction indicated by these arrows here. So that means that we can draw circular magnetic field lines around a current carrying conductor. Bear in mind that the conductor doesn't have a north pole or a south pole. So the field lines don't go from north pole to south pole, they go in a circle around the conductor, which is not something that happens if we use ordinary magnets. So the magnetic field is, as we would expect, strongest close to the conductor. So the magnetic field lines close to the conductor are closer together than the magnetic field lines far away from the conductor. So how can we figure out the direction of this circular magnetic field? Well, the answer is a little rule of thumb called the right-hand grip rule, or sometimes the right-hand curl rule. And we can see how it works over here. We point our thumb in the direction that the uh, electric current is going. Remember that the electric current goes from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, not the same way as the, direct, uh, as the electrons, right? So the, the positive conventional current goes in this direction, and then the magnetic field, which remember is circular, will point in this direction. And you can see that in this diagram over here. Of course, if the current was flowing in the other direction, then the magnetic field lines would curl around in the other direction as well, in the same way as your fingers of your right hand. Remember, this will only work for your right hand. If you use your left hand, you'll get it wrong. So if you're ever using this rule in the middle of an exam, make sure uh, if you're right-handed, you put your pencil down before you try and use the right-hand rule. If you try to write and use your left hand to figure it out, as I said, you'll get it wrong. So what happens if we get a coil of wires, something looking a little like this? Uh, we're going to call this a solenoid. It'll become very important later on. So a solenoid is a coil of insulated wire that can be connected to a circuit, right? So if we connect this to a circuit and uh, an electric current goes through there, it'll be moving around in a circle, right? Until it comes out the other end. So what would happen if we tried to figure out the magnetic field around this? Well, we can use the right-hand grip rule to figure out the field around a straight uh, current carrying conductor, but what about a coil? Well, each little loop of wire will produce a little bit of a magnetic field, right? 
So suppose that we just look at the bottom bit of the solenoid over here. We can imagine this as a very short, straight, current-carrying conductor, carrying current in this direction, right? So we can see that if we point our thumb like that, there will be a circular magnetic field created that goes around like this, right? And if we keep going around, we'll keep seeing that magnetic field produced. Uh, and of course, we'll keep going around and around the solenoid, and each time we'll produce a little bit more of a magnetic field. So when we put all these magnetic fields together, it'll look something like this, where the blue lines represent the magnetic field, right? So we can see that each little loop of wire is contributing to this one big magnetic field that's produced by the entire coil, or the entire solenoid. So this field might actually look a little bit familiar. It's exactly the same as a field that would be created by a bar magnet. If the bar magnet looks like this, with the north pole at that end and the south pole at this end. So that means that just by getting a long coil of wire with a large enough current through it, we can create our own fairly weak bar magnet. There is in fact a way that we can make it stronger, but we'll get to that in just a moment. If we have a soft iron core that looks something like this, uh, then the magnetic field lines that are created by the solenoid will be constrained to that soft iron core. Right? The magnetic field lines will uh, basically permeate completely through this iron core, meaning that the iron core will be what's emitting the magnetic field lines. And now this is starting to look very familiar indeed, because the magnetic field line around this soft iron core is exactly identical to the magnetic field lines around a bar magnet. So what does this mean? Well, it means that we've created an electromagnet. An electromagnet uh, is an iron core surrounded by a solenoid. Uh, and when a current runs through the solenoid, the iron core behaves exactly like a magnet. The advantage of an electromagnet is that we can turn it on and off, and we can change the strength of the electromagnet by changing the amount of current running through the solenoid. So the north pole of the electromagnet can be found with the right-handed grip rule. So we have uh, an interesting little phenomenon happening here. We can use uh, the right-hand grip rule for two things. We can either say the thumb is the direction of current and the fingers are the direction of the magnetic field lines. Or we can do something a little different. We can curl the fingers in the direction of the current, that is, the direction of the wires in the solenoid. Right? So here, if current's flowing this way through the circuit, then the solenoid will be bent in that direction. Right? The thumb points to the north pole of the magnet. So we, we have two uses for this right-hand grip rule. We can curl the fingers in the direction of the solenoid and figure out the direction of the magnetic pole, or we can point our thumb in the direction of the current and figure out the direction of the magnetic field. Remember though, once again, this only applies for your right hand, not your left hand. Another way to remember the poles of an electromagnet is to use a mnemonic something like this. Uh, so, we can see that when we're looking at the south pole of an electromagnet, we can draw an S with little arrows on the end, and the arrows will be pointing clockwise. Uh, and of course we can see this with the right-hand grip rule as well. If we have a clockwise solenoid, then the thumb is pointing this way, which means that's the north pole and the south pole is facing towards you, just like we can see here. Of course, when you're looking at the north pole of a magnet, you can draw an N and draw arrows on the end. This means that we get a little anti-clockwise um, pattern. And once again, if we use the right-hand grip rule and we put an anti-clockwise current, we can see that the north pole will be facing towards us. So these are two different ways of remembering 
which pole of the electromagnet is which. So now that we've learned a bit about magnetic fields and a little bit about the magnetic fields around conductors, let's go on to some questions to test your knowledge. Question one, which one of the following is correct? Magnetic fields intersect at right angles. Magnetic fields can intersect but never at right angles. Magnetic fields only intersect when two different magnets are touching each other. Or magnetic field lines never intersect. Well, these first two don't seem very likely uh, because we know that field lines don't, going ne don't like going near each other. If we bring two magnetic fields together, the field lines will distort to create a new magnetic field. All right, how about this one though? Suppose we take two north poles of a magnet and we push them into contact with each other. Surely there must be some crossing over of magnetic field lines. Well, the answer is no, there's not. Even if the magnets are touching each other, the field lines will start distorting so that they're never actually crossing. They'll just be going almost perpendicularly out of the surface of the magnet, instead of heading toward the other magnet. So that means even if we have magnets that are touching each other, the magnetic field lines won't intersect. Our last option then is that magnetic field lines never intersect, and this is in fact the correct answer. This makes magnetic fields different to gravitational or electric fields. Question two. A wire carries a current straight towards you. In which direction do the magnetic field lines turn? Well, what sort of magnetic field line do we get, first of all? If we have a current carrying conductor in a straight line, then it produces a circular magnetic field, right? So it can't be D and it can't be C. Uh, we know that wires carrying a current always generate a magnetic field, and we know that it's circular, so it can't be pointing in a single direction. So, which is it out of clockwise and anticlockwise? Well, to our rescue comes the right-hand grip rule. Our thumb is going to be the direction of the current going straight towards you. Now, which way do my fingers curl? Well. Uh, if we look at the direction of the fingers, we can see that it is indeed anti-clockwise. Question three. Complete this sentence. Magnetic field lines move from the pole of the magnet to the pole of the magnet. So we've got a north and south here somewhere, right? So which is which? Well, if you remember, our convention is that magnetic field lines go from the north pole of a magnet to the south pole of a magnet. And so this is the correct answer. Question four. Field lines represented by crosses are moving the viewer, and field lines represented by dots are moving the viewer. So one of these will be away, and one of these will be towards, right? They're probably not going to be the same. Uh, so if we think back to vectors and how they work, we can remember that a vector pointing towards you is represented by a dot and away from you is a cross. So our answer here is that if they're represented by a cross, they're moving away from you, uh, away from the viewer, and field lines represented by dots are moving towards the viewer. Question five, explain how to construct an electromagnet. Can you remember this one? So I'll just give a brief explanation once again as to how electromagnets work. An electromagnet is constructed by coiling a length of conducting wire around a soft iron core. Right? So that's the simplest sort of answer you can give. Now a bit of elaboration on that. Electrical currents generate magnetic fields. Right? We have a straight current carrying conductor, it'll be a circular magnetic field. But the current through a solenoid, that is a coil of wire, will produce a magnetic field like that of a bar magnet. And the purpose of the iron core is to sort of constrain all the magnetic field lines to within that iron core. That actually increases the power of the electromagnet quite a bit because the magnetic field lines prefer to be inside an iron core than to just be in the air within a solenoid. So the core behaves exactly like a magnet because the magnetic field lines coming out of the core are indistinguishable from those of a permanent bar magnet. Well, that's the end of the questions. So in this section we've learned about magnetic field lines how to draw them, and the magnetic field lines around current carrying conductors.